Hi, and welcome to Everyday Law. I'm your host, attorney Robert Monahan, and this is the show that brings you all the law you need to know. Now, I don't have a guest today, so it'll just be me talking to you. And today I thought I'd do a little biography. We've been together, I've been doing the show for about three years, and I wanted to give you an introduction into who I am because I've never done a show about myself. Usually I have a guest on and I interview my guest and find out all about my guest, but I, I've never done a show to introduce myself to you. So I thought that would be a fun thing to do and, uh, and maybe we could all uh, find out a little bit more about me today. So the first question I always ask my guests is this, did you always want to be a lawyer? For me, the answer is no. I have to say I didn't always want to be a lawyer. For most of my life, I didn't know what I wanted to do, for most of my younger life anyway. Uh, there were certain things I knew I liked, but I wasn't sure what I would do with them. And uh, I had several options. But let me tell you what I really enjoyed. I liked telling stories, and I liked reading stories. So I liked novels and literature. And I liked those kinds of classes where you, you studied literature and you talked about it. So I, re I really liked storytelling. And the other thing I really liked was teaching and communicating and talking about things I liked to talk about. And so I really had three ideas of what I could do with that, with uh, my love of storytelling and my love of teaching. The first idea I had would, was that I would be a newspaper reporter. And I would tell stories in print about my community in the world somehow and be a newspaper reporter. The second idea was that I would be a college professor and I would teach kids about how to write and read about great literature. And the third idea, which is the most prosaic idea, was, was that I would be a lawyer. And as things worked out for me, um, I eliminated uh, two of the three and became a lawyer. Um, when I was in college, it was in the early 90s, early to mid 90s, and the internet had just kind of become a thing. Uh, it kind of entered the public, public consciousness and uh, the internet was, was kind of everywhere. And the internet had the effect of eliminating newspaper reporting. Uh, almost all local community papers are, are really suffering now. And it's in large part due, I think, to the internet. It's very hard to keep a local paper going. And so there's not a lot of places for young reporters to start anymore. So I'm really glad that I didn't become a newspaper reporter. I'm also glad I didn't become a college professor or try to do that. The, the reason that is is because the tenured professors stay on forever. They stay on uh, teaching forever and they, they retire only when they really have to. And my friends that went into being college professors and teaching became adjuncts and they kind of traveled from college to college, never really getting the tenured positions they wanted and it was a very precarious life for them. And so it was very hard to get health benefits, hard to get security, hard to raise a family. So I think by a process of elimination, I couldn't take my storytelling and teaching to newspaper reporting. I couldn't take it to um, being a college professor. So I took my, what I would call my talents or what I really like to do, and I became a lawyer. And uh, as a lawyer, as a trial lawyer, you have to have a knack for telling stories. And you also have to have a knack for researching and then teaching about your research to the judge or the jury or whoever you're trying to, con to convince and persuade of your position. So I think I found a good spot for myself, but it wasn't really what I always wanted to be. But uh, that's, that's, the, uh, that's kind of the, the intro I wanted to make that I always loved storytelling and teaching, and that led me to being a lawyer through kind of a process of elimination. Now, I grew up in Lake County. I grew up in Waukegan, actually, where my dad is a doctor. He's still a doctor there. And I went to Carmel High School, and I graduated in 1992. After that, I went to the University of Chicago, in Chicago, of course. And um, after that, I went to the University of Virginia for law school. And at the University of Virginia, I had the unusual experience of having a better time in law school 
than I did as an undergrad. Um, at University of Virginia, they really made sure that the law students had a good time in addition to learning the law. They broke every small section into a, uh, a softball team, and all the softball teams played each other in a tournament, and then the winner of the tournament played the softball team composed of the law professors. And that was, that was the kind of school University of Virginia was. And the University of Chicago didn't have anything like that. And I, I think that, uh, like I said, the University of Virginia had a much better quality of life as a student than the University of Chicago. And uh, it's an unusual experience to have a better time in graduate school than as an undergrad. But that's, that's how it worked for me. After graduating University of Virginia, I moved to New York City where I got my first job. And uh, New York City was uh, kind of a, a whole new world for me. I'd never been in such an exciting place with so much going on, uh, so much happening all the time, so many young people that were just getting their start in life. And it was almost like one party after another. It was really an exciting place to live. Um, it was kind of a work hard, play hard setting. So while you were at work, you worked long hours, grueling hours, um, almost to the point of exhaustion. But when you had fun, you really stayed out late. And um, like I said, New York City was like party after party. And I met my wife in New York City. And uh, well, some would say we met at a, uh, at a bar. I like to say we either met at a bar or met at church um, because we met at a bar after church. See, when I first got to New York City, I didn't know many people. And so I went to the young adult clubs affiliated with ch my church. And uh, that's where I met my wife. And uh, we hit it off right away. And uh, kind of the rest is history. Um, we're married now and have three kids. And we had our first two while we were in New York. My oldest son, James, was born there. And my, my younger uh, son, Jack, was born there. And uh, that, that's... Uh, my family life. My daughter Emily was born after I moved here to Lake County, but I'll get to that in a little bit. The only other thing I wanted to mention about New York City was this. While I was there uh, living in New York City, 9-11 happened. And I was there in Midtown Manhattan uh, when the first plane struck the Twin Towers. I remember I was walking to a Starbucks in the morning. It was about 9 o'clock, 9.30, I think. And I was walking to a Starbucks to get a coffee. And the Twin Towers loomed over the whole island of Manhattan. From just about anywhere you were, from downtown to the Bronx, you could see the Twin Towers. And I was, I was coming out of the Starbucks, and I saw a plume of smoke coming from one of the towers. <laughs> and I asked a guy coming out, hey, what, what's that? What, uh, what's going on there? And the guy asked was a typical New Yorker. And he said, Ah, don't worry about it. Forget about it. It's just some jerk ran his plane into the building. So nobody really knew what had happened. And then the other one struck. And then they came down. And uh, everything shut down that day. Everyone in my law office uh, by the late morning had left to go to the Red Cross to give blood. But what happened was they turned us all away because uh, there was no blood they needed. It was the kind of disaster where either you got out or you didn't. There were no survivors that needed uh, blood from anyone. Like I said, you either lived or you perished. And after that, um, that night, I had, uh, I, w I had gone down with a friend to see uh, what was left of the Twin Towers. And a whole crowd had gathered down not far. It was sort of near Wall Street. <laughs> and it was dark, and all you could see were the illumination of blow torches, and you could hear the voices of workers calling to each other. But other than that, the crowd was standing there in silence, just watching the work uh, be done to, uh, to clear out what was left. And after that in New York, it became a little bit more like what I would say the Midwest is like. People were more patriotic. New York is a very cosmopolitan, uh, sophisticated town. But after the Twin Towers fell, everyone wore a flag. There were flags draped everywhere. And people would look out for their neighbor instead of pushing past them on the subway. And for a while, New York City, Manhattan, reminded me of the Midwest, 
where people took care of each other a little more, looked out for each other a little more, and were a little bit more public-spirited than uh, maybe the sophisticated cosmopolitan town I was used to. And that's what really started to make me miss home. Um, when they fell and people were warmer and looking out for each other more, and you had more of a feel of a small town, it made me feel like I missed home. And at that point, we had had two children. And my wife and I were wondering what our future held in New York. And my parents were always calling on the phone, asking me, we miss our grandchildren. When will you ever come home and, and uh, come back to Lake County? So uh, my wife and I started talking about it. And we started wondering, well, would we do that? And at the time, my wife's father was sick with cancer. So my father-in-law, George, was sick with cancer. And uh, once he passed away, we made up our mind that we missed, I missed the Midwest enough, and my wife was willing to come with me. So we left New York City, came to the Midwest. It was 2008 in January. And uh, I came here looking for a job. And uh, at that time, it was another disaster, not quite like 9-11, but the uh, Lehman Brothers had just gone belly up. The housing market had crashed. I came to Lake County, a homecoming, looking for a job with two small children. And uh, it was very hard at that time to find something. Eventually, I got something going. And I'd like to tell you about that when I come back in just a minute. Hi, welcome back to Everyday Law, the show that demystifies the law for you and your family. Again, I'm your host, Attorney Robert Monahan, and I'm having the pleasure of talking to you today about me and my history a little bit to give you a taste of where I've been and why I'm doing the show. Again, I started out by saying that um, I, like to, I like to tell stories, I like to teach, and uh, that's really what brought me into being uh, a lawyer more than anything else. I had several alternatives. I could have been a newspaper reporter. I could have been a college professor, maybe. But I really uh, like the fact that I took my love of storytelling and my love of teaching and brought it into the law. And I'm actually able to, to do it on TV, too, uh, through Comcast 17. So I want to thank them, too, because they, they really gave me the opportunity to do this kind of thing, which I adore. And as long as I'm thanking people, I want to thank my engineer. His name is Ed Wazinski. And every week or every month, he comes and helps me do this show. And uh, I should really put him on the credits, because he does just a great job for me and helps me set everything up. But I was telling the story of New York City. And I was telling the story of how the Twin Towers fell. And after they fell, New York City, which I regard as kind of cosmopolitan and sophisticated and a little unfriendly to families, and I had two small children at the time. Um, when they fell, it reminded me, the aftermath anyway, reminded me a little bit of home and started me thinking that maybe I would like to go home someday. Maybe I would like to go home and uh, restart my law life in the Midwest. Uh, and again, my parents were always asking, when they would see their grandkids. And I was always hoping that maybe my wife would agree that we could come and move home together. So we moved back in 2008. It was January of 2008. So in this January, I think it'll be uh, 10 years we've been here in Lake County. And I have to say that um, the beginning was rough. The beginning was rough. When I got here, the Great Recession had just started. All of the uh, employers had closed their doors, uh, I think, because no one knew what was coming. No one knew if it would be the Great Depression coming, uh, coming to, uh, to stay for decades. No one knew. Um, they knew that Lehman Brothers had gone bankrupt, that the car industries needed to be taken over by the government, that um, the housing market had collapsed, and we were going to see a slate of foreclosures that would last for years. 
and the big bank bailouts were underway. And like I said, nobody knew what was coming. So I entered Lake County in this environment, kind of unknown and without a job. And I really didn't know what to do. I had hoped to work um, at the state's attorney's office initially and get a job and catch on there and get started there and kind of get my foot in the door here in Lake County. And at the time, um, it could have happened maybe if everything had worked out right. But as it was, it was a, a time when if you had a job, you weren't leaving your job because the recession was looming and looking so terrible. So you really only could get a job in the state's attorney's office if someone left and an opening came up and no one was leaving. And I was growing very frustrated. At the time, I was living at home with my mom and dad, who encouraged me to leave. But we were living with me, my wife, and my two-year-old and a little baby. And it was a little bit uncomfortable. And I remember my dad, my dad would uh, just come home kind of grim, wondering what would happen next. Would I find work in Lake County, and what would happen next? And um, I was doing everything I could at the time to throw myself into the legal community and find work. Every two years in the legal community in the Lake County Bar Association, they do a show, a kind of variety show, a send-up show where they make fun of the lawyers, and it's called the, the Gridiron Show. And it was just starting when I came, and uh, so I, I joined the cast, and I participated in the Gridiron Show when no one in the county knew who I was, because I had just gotten there. <laughs> and then after that, I wrote a little article about my experience in the Gridiron Show for the local newspaper for the Bar Association that's called The Docket. And uh, what happened next is kind of interesting. My dad's a doctor in Lake County, like I said, and a retired judge came to see him. He's one of his patients. And he did something really nice. He brought a copy of The Docket with him and showed my dad the article that I had written and said, your son's doing great. He's really doing everything he could do to uh, find something, and you don't need to worry. And my dad came home, and like I said, he'd been a little grim. Uh, and he came home and was really happy, happier than he'd been, and uh, told me the story. So I wrote that judge a little note <laughs> thanking him for what he'd done and what he'd said to my dad, because like I said, it lightened the atmosphere at home a little bit, and I really appreciated it. And I wrote him a note asking him if I could take him out for lunch. And uh, he agreed. And we went to lunch at Bob and Ann's in Waukegan. And at that lunch, I told him I was worried. I told him that I'd just arrived home from New York in the recession, and that things, uh, things at the state's attorney's office were slow in terms of openings, and that uh, I was worried. And he said to me something that I'll never forget. <laughs> he said, Bob? Why don't you start your own practice? Why don't you do that now? Why don't you start your own law firm? And I remember thinking, well, that's preposterous. How could I ever do that? And I told him I, I always wanted to do that, but I didn't know if this was the right time. I mean, the economy was bad, and things weren't uh, looking good for any business. How could I start a new business? And he said, if you start a law firm now, by the time other people start their law firms, you'll have a head start on them. And I went home and I chewed it over, and I spoke with my wife about it, and we decided, yeah, we'll do that. We had a little money saved up from uh, the inheritance from her father-in-law's death. He had died of cancer, and that brought us again to uh, Lake County, where I returned home, and she was coming for the first time. So I opened up my doors uh, as a, a law firm on my own. And uh, that was May of 2009. <laughs> and uh, I'd like to tell you about how I made it go in just a little bit. But um, that's how I got my start here. And I owe it all to the judge who gave me the advice at Bob and Ann's to, uh, to go ahead and do it despite the times being bad. 
So I'll tell you what happened and how it went in just a minute. Hi, welcome back to Everyday Law, the show that demystifies the law for you and your family. Again, I'm attorney Robert Monahan, and I'm just telling you a little bit about the story of how I began uh, the TV show and the radio show that I do. Um, I told a little bit about how I love to tell stories and I love to teach. And part of the reason I tell you that is because that's what I feel I'm doing with my show. I teach by bringing other guests on and I teach and I tell stories by bringing other guests on. And today I just thought I'd indulge myself and tell you a little bit about me. I began my career, like I said, in New York City and I worked there for nine years. I got married there and had my first two children there. And then I moved back to Lake County where I'm from in the midst of the Great Recession, actually at the beginning of the Great Recession, but everybody kind of knew what was coming. And we, uh, we were worried about what would happen. And then I had a lunch with a judge who told me to start my own practice. And I, uh, I did. I took what we had, and my wife and I started my practice in May of 2009. She's, she's super confident in me, so she had a good sleep every night, and I remember staying up at night worrying and staring at the ceiling. But it's kind of all turned out okay. And I just want to tell you something, that um, this show kind of came out of efforts to grow my practice in a long sort of, in a long sort of way. I began speaking at libraries. I was asked by the executive director of a library one time when we were at lunch that if I were to ever give a talk on a subject, what would I talk about? And at the time, I told him I would talk about small claims practice because small claims is an area that is important for people, but people often can't find lawyers to help them with. The reason is there's not enough um, money involved for a lawyer to get involved in a small claim all the time. So I told him I would speak about small claims because people need help with that, but often can't find it. And he said, you're on. Why don't you speak at my library at, at uh, small claims, about small claims, do it yourself. So I said I would, and that was my first lecture at the Warren Newport Library in Gurney. And it went great. It went fantastic. And like I said, I always enjoyed teaching. And I was in front of a crowd speaking about small claims. And the crowd was large. And just about everyone that came had a small claim of their own that they wanted to bring. And I fielded their questions, explained what I could. And I think everybody there had a great time. And I got great reviews. After that, I started speaking at libraries pretty regularly about different things. I would speak about kind of everyday law topics. I spoke about things like uh, basic wills and trusts. Again, small claims, do it yourself. How to work with a contractor so that you don't get screwed. I mean, these were the topics that I thought people really cared about. And I, I enjoyed it every time I did it. I enjoyed telling stories, and I enjoyed the teaching of it. And pretty soon, uh, a, a, a friend of mine who is a physical therapist told me I should take my show and put it on the radio, or take my presentations and put them on the radio. His wife was, uh, was on the radio at a, a low power station in Round Lake Heights called WRLR 98.3 FM. And her show was about Zen wellness. And he said it was good for her. She enjoyed the exposure. And sometimes it would bring him business. And so I said, well, I would love to do some shows on the radio. And I met the chief uh, in charge of the radio. And he said he wanted a show about the law. So I got on the radio and I started doing a show about legal things, and I called it Everyday Law. And pretty soon, I ran out of my own material. So I had to reach out and get guests on the show. And we've been doing it for about three years on WRLR. Uh, it comes out as a podcast on iTunes. And I'm approaching um, episode 100. And I've gotten about 21,000 downloads since I've been doing it. And I'm really happy with it. And in promoting my radio show, I went on a cable access TV show on Comcast 17. It was called Senior Issues. Senior Issues had been written up in the newspaper. And uh, I, wondered if, uh, I wondered about the hostess. Her name is Vita Verden, and how she grew her audience. And she invited me on her show. 
and I had a great time doing her show. You can see it on YouTube if you like. Just look up Senior Issues in my name, Robert Monahan. And I had a great time, and when it was over, the manager of the station told me, well, you could have your own show. And, um, and I said, well, why not? So um, I've been producing my show for about a year and a half. I've had some great guests. I've had Waukegan to college, the Zacharias Center, Mike Nierheim talking about the opioid program he runs, and various lawyers talking about their technical specialty. And I found that doing the TV show fits what I always wanted to do, and that's tell stories and teach people about things that I feel are important, um, about the law and about the Lake County community we live in. So I'm going to keep doing it. I love doing it. And uh, thank you for listening to me tell you about my, my story. Uh, I had a great time talking to you today, and I hope you had an enjoyable time listening to me. Um, I'm looking forward to the new year, 2019. We'll have a lot of great shows. I think Mike Nierheim is going to come back on, um, and we're going to have, like I said, a lot of good shows. So please stay tuned every Monday night at 530 to Everyday Law with me, your host, attorney Robert Monahan. Thanks so much for listening and have a great night.